am a faker, I am a fraud. I betray my values, yet every single time I'm allowed to just avoid punishment. Sorry, I just... Donkey Kong Country... Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is... Okay, alright. Here's a quick backstory. In 2014, I visited the Nintendo store in New York, New York. As I walked through those doors, to my immediate left stood the world's most famous computer game gorilla. No, the world's most famous computer game ape, Donkey Kong. Created by Nintendo's Shigeru Miyamoto and redesigned by Rareware's Kevin Bayliss, stood before me. He took the form of a statue, promoting his new game, Tropical Freeze. But you see, this is the issue. I was something of a Kong head myself. I had then recently played through and fallen in love with the original Donkey Kong Country trilogy. Those games though, they're pretty good. Don't just take my word for it. Open a new tab right now and type in best SNES games and you'll get the idea. Don't worry, I'm not gonna do the whole Donkey Kong Country revolutionized graphics retrospective that every other video does. So I'll spare you the paragraph on cultural impact. Just know that people will go nanas about this one. However, the following years saw the series pivot towards spin-offs. There was an absence of standout titles. DK became less of a concrete series and more of an abstract idea of a franchise. The spirit of that original trilogy was never revisited. That was until 2014. In Tropical Freeze, Donkey Kong Country returns. I'm now receiving word that it already did that and it was also called that. Yeah. Donkey Kong and his cohorts find themselves displaced from their homeland and must venture their way back. The narrative parallel to the Odyssey is immediately obvious. The gameplay is an upgrade to the side-scrolling of old. This is the greatest double monkey romp of all time. But here's the catch. Not many people played this one because it released on the Wii U. And now I understand this is probably your first time hearing about this thing. But me? I had a Wii U. I lived in one of the tens, if not hundreds of houses that had a Wii U in them. I was the game's target demographic. I did not play the game. And like that, the world kept on turning, life went on. And like the sands of time, the years were measured by how many inches of dust had built up on your Wii U. What would he think of me now, after I met him face to face, after this spiritual napkin signing? After all those years, I still hadn't experienced this superb return to form, which not only understood what made the originals cool, but knew how to make them even better. A big thing the classics had going for them was the sense of momentum. The roll attack has a dual purpose. When it connects, it gives you a little speed boost. There'll be like three dudes marching towards you so you can just plow straight through them and pick up speed. The enemy placement rewards you for engaging with them rather than avoiding them outright. Risky, but worth it for how you can keep that tempo going. Riskier still, you can like daisy chain jumps together to bounce from one guy's head to another if you can line it up. When super duper players eventually reach their I know come through moment, the way they see the game completely changes. Enemies are no longer hurdles, but rather hurdles. Olympics. In addition to this, most movement patterns aren't on a global timer, but rather camera based. This means that the position of enemies, as well as other things like ropes and barrel cannons, don't start moving until they appear on screen. This means the levels are designed in a way that allows the player to reach a flow state where they're just speeding through the level. The design encourages this, so whenever you slow down, that's entirely on you. As Greg Mails, producer and lead designer of the first two games, describes this, I wanted the levels to be fast and fluid, so if you were brave enough to go first time, you didn't have to stop and wait. You could almost look really good by going really fast, and it gave me that sense of satisfaction, even though the level design was helping you by kind of how it was set up. The game's not an autopilot or anything, but if the player can react to the platform challenges properly, the risk versus reward nature of the speed allows maintaining this flow to be really satisfying. Tropical Freeze's design takes this a step further. There's an abundance of these alternate paths, which are hidden in plain sight, allowing for this brisk flow state. You can sometimes read between the lines, so to speak, to discover secret routes of conveniently placed, bounceable baddie noggins. All right, it's time for some advanced techniques. Monkey Kong and his merry men have their special little tricks. Natural on-the-fly experimentation with your moveset opens up platforming set pieces to create alternate, faster routes forward. The opening level introduces the mechanic of climbing across these grass ceilings. You have to do this to avoid an otherwise unavoidable spike pit. But if you know, you know. Real OGs remember the roll jump. This Newtonian nightmare lets you jump while you're already in midair. A more tactile, more engaging maneuver. Not long after this, there's a section where you're riding this small raft across the stage. Again, this can be skipped entirely. You can pebble skim off the water and rebound off this dude's bonds. In a later level, this branch unfurls to reveal the path forward. However, you can bounce off these two dudes before the vine kills them to bypass the waiting, no slowing down. 
The level's brisk speed and blissful flow is the gameplay equivalent of those videos where they like throw a ball and it like bounces off a bunch of things and lands in a cup. The K-O-N-G letters are placed along these paths, so the pace doesn't have to hit the wall every time you want to pick one up. Though a problem I had with the originals is still here, and that's the letters themselves. Now, I don't know if these are initials or some kind of acronym, and honestly, I don't even think I want to know what they stand for. Tropical Freeze sees a short-lived series revived and injected with the lessons learned in the decades since the originals. Now, let's look at a series that's had a more robust evolution. Mario. Mario Brothers. The Brothers Mario. Hello, Mario. The 2D ones. 2D Mario's had a far greater opportunity for incremental improvement, with more games released over a longer time. The cycle of release, feedback, learn, develop, release has gone on long enough to put the series in a really good spot. In my onion, the first Super Mario Bros is even today some seriously solid stuff, and each following game has only further refined the formula. Speaking of this formula, word on the street is they've gotten it down to a science lately. Pure, crystalline, A1 2D product. I decided to check in on New Super Mario Bros. U, the newest in the only existing lifeline of 2D Mario right now. And I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to wait another 8 years after hearing its praises. I'm going to try it out right now. And I did try it out right now. And here's my rundown. The premise is not too dissimilar from Tropical Kong. Super Mario and his cohorts find themselves displaced from their home Mushroom Kingdom and must venture their way back. As far as the game portion is concerned, there are some pretty important things to look at. Things that held it back from becoming a modern day certified hood classic. That fires the let's look at Tropical Freeze again. Even the perennial gamer banes, water and ice levels have been solved for good. Retro Studios have learned the lesson. Though, instead of axing them outright, they double down on them in a way that's actually fun. Where water slowed you down and slippery surfaces threw your physics muscle memory out the window, they've now been repurposed into more ways of building and maintaining speed. You make the most of the different physics quirks. This is something Mario doesn't really do. His moveset is just as basic as Donk's, but there's no synthesis between the stage layout and the movement. I put on a speedrun of Nisimbu to see if I could make any observations about this. The only times I could see opportunities for faster traversal at the cost of increased risk is in the auto-scrolling levels. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's totally understandable to not like the segments where you're just waiting for the screen to crawl forward so you can actually get through it. The thing is though, you're still beholden to the crawl. The only thing you're really skipping is the playing the game part. You're ultimately negating the slower pace to go at the normal pace again. The solution to the boring auto-scroller is making it even more boring. Compare this to Donkey Freeze's clever way of making boring ice and water levels fun. The fun ultimately comes from how engaging it is. You go faster sliding across the ice, but you need quick reflexes to avoid hazards. But here, you're just holding onto the acorn MacGuffin, just to get past the bits where the game goes even slower. Somehow, my biggest issue isn't with the actual gameplay, but rather with the presentation. DK's world is more lively than ever, whereas Mario's has gone dull. In New Soup, the core game design has essentially been perfected, the game design is all there, with no room for anything else. It may seem unfair to ask for novelty in such a long-running series, but I think that even now, there's plenty of places where they can experiment and try something new and exciting. Given the incremental nature of improvement, there are plenty of small areas where problems can be solved. Mario's once lively world has become a plasticky backdrop with no charm. You can't just do that to the Mushroom Kingdom. I want to explore Mario's fungal region. Wait, that sounds right. I mean, seriously, it's made even me a bit jaded. It do be kind of depressing though. It's like I'm playing a bunch of AI generated levels. They may have it down to a formula, but gosh, I'm playing more formula than game. It really helps the Tropical Freeze presents its gameplay in an interesting way. For example, the sawmill level is an auto-scroller, but a really cool one. You have to react quickly, but not in a cheap way, like in the first game where you're just jump scared by some random bloke coming in from off screen. The platforms are the actual chunks of wood being cut up by the blade. You see the wood get flung in front of you, so you always know what's coming up and can react. There are loads of actual fun on rails levels like this, and none of them are a drag in the slightest. <laughs> Every little platform in this game makes logical sense. Leaves blown up by gusts of wind, parts of scaffolding, balloons, etc. Just imagine, they had to make every single platform make sense within the world. Imagine how much effort this must take. It goes to show the level of attention Retro have put into this game. They've gone far above and beyond the Call of Duty. This isn't necessary or anything. There's no requirement to go ham with the visuals. Mario 3 simply had platforms bolted into the background and suspended from the ceiling, but that alone adds character. Mario U just feels like playing a pretty boilerplate ROM hack. 
New Super Mario Bros. U refuses to flesh its world out, which is fine, yet it insists on not allowing two Marios on screen at once. Oh, you want to play co-op? Well, only one person can be Mario, one person can be Luigi, and the other two have to be Goombas. Good luck. Right, take a look at this. So this is three different levels from Donkey Kong and one level from Mario, right? Right? Wrong. It's the other way around. It's three different Mario levels and just one DK level. Oh, you saw that coming? Oh, you really knew I was going to say that? Well, wrong again. This is one Donkey Kong level and three Mario levels from three different games. Oh, you can tell the difference between these? New soup feels like Mario has indeed been perfected, no doubt. But at this point, we can see the chemical structure of that colourful test tube broth. It won't be long before we can feed an AI a few 2D Mario levels and maybe throw in a Game Maker's Toolkit video for good measure, and it should have no problem spitting out an entire game. <sighs> Less I. Will we ever have a refreshing new course clear plumber game? Seems no. Actually, yeah, actually. Mario 3D World. Bunch of fun. It reversed my sterile plumber induced depression. I mean, up until now, I was constantly, you know, just ready to give up. I don't even want to do this. Again, I only just got around to playing this one. Just as with DKCTF, I'd heard many an exaltation about it, yet I did not try it out when it was new. I just wasn't in the market for Cat by Mario at the time. It's not just that it positively overflows with gimmicks, a term which I use endearingly, it's also that the pace at which each new idea is both introduced and discarded is deliciously brisk. No idea outstays its welcome. So where the game may lack hardcore challenge, the pace alone keeps it engaging. This is really what New You could have done with, except it does have have this short and sweet pacing oh in the expansion pack, New Super Luigi U, but you only have 100 seconds to finish the level. Even if the levels are shorter and designed with this restriction in mind, the haste dangles over you and you just can't shake it off. It's the little things. Also, this game came out in the year of Luigi. Remember the year of Luigi? That was years ago. Hashtag feel old yet? I love Luigi. I cherished that year. Yet I never got the game. I am a faker. I am a fraud. 2D Mario needs innovation. It doesn't need a massive overhaul. Incremental changes can go a long way. Any influential, successful series of any media needs to innovate. That's how the things you inspire begin to surpass you. They've learned from your mistakes, while you still haven't. That's how they get you. So, in that Wii U era, judging from the output of both series, we can ultimately surmise that 2D Donkey Kong is better than 2D Mario. But 3D Mario is better than 3D DK. Or is it? Oh, down below. This is like a mod for Jimmy Neutron or something. The Donkey Kong Country cartoon revolutionized graphics. So, what's there to take away? Well, some lessons for budding game devs. Tweaking the design to add more risk versus reward elements keeps the moment to moment gameplay interesting and ensures it never switches into autopilot. This can help you reward those who come back to replay the game. If their ability at the game maxes out, their enjoyment may just do the same. And what's my problem with the other game? Am I really just a hashtag hater? Really, it's just the fact that I can tell they're playing it safe with games like this. They can get away with a bare minimum and it'll still be a fairly good beginner's game because the foundation is so solid at this point. But where's the soul? It simply looks like you just don't care about what you're making. Meanwhile, this is how you do your retro revival. The funny thing is, the buffet of new soup is made in-house at Ninty, whereas the British monkey game has been taken into custody by new blood. Texans, no less. Just as it was the right move to loan the Kong overseas to modernize him, a similar innovation has happened. I'm not only chuffed it all worked out, but I'm also kind of moved by just how much good care they've taken of him. What do you think of that, Miyamoto? <laughs> Next day, Kong wakes up, where's my bananas? Uh, he goes out to find him. Productions.